This video is brought to you by Onyx Offroad, the best off-road navigation software out there. Download the app to your phone, it integrates with Apple CarPlay, and never get lost out on the trails. Hey everybody, it's Bronco versus Wrangler Day, but it's a little bit apples to oranges, maybe like apples to sardines, because what I've got right here is a $33,000 Jeep Wrangler, my personal $33,000 Jeep Wrangler, and we're gonna put it up against a two-door Bronco, but not a $33,000 two-door Bronco, like a 50 plus thousand dollar wild track of 35s. And we're gonna see, can the little plucky Wrangler keep up with this big badass Bronco? And to help us with that, we've got David, who's been working so hard on our off-road course here at Tumbleweed Ranch, and it's, have, it's looking good. It's been all week, been moving rocks, logs, been cutting trails, making a bog, a swamp. <laughs> Do you wanna get this dirty? I think, I think the swamp kind of made itself, but yeah, in this video, I think for the first time in a long time, we're going mud. Oh wow, check that out. Oh wow. So Tommy, you're putting a lot of trust in me right here. I just finished putting the last rock 30 minutes ago with the skid steer. I haven't tested it yet. So we've got a what, 50 some thousand dollar machine that we're gonna test my work. That is exactly right, David. Um, but it's worth noting that this has been like a several day project for the rocks. It's probably just the top few, right, <laughs> that are a little bit sketchy. Well, all these rocks came out of uh, a rock pile I had at home, and I've been bringing a trailer load at a time, placing them over a week's period of time, working on the logs. But I'm just hoping none of them roll. You know what I'm realizing? This is a wild track Bronco, so it's got different modes that the Badlands doesn't have. So I'm gonna go into mud and ruts because there's no rock crawl mode on this model. Um, and then I've got, I'm gonna try it with lockers off. So four low lockers off, let's see what happens. Now these boulders are big, in some cases two feet in diameter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an easy and a hard side. So there's gonna be an easy side for the crossovers and then the hard side for vehicles like this a Bronco on the 35s, but we're gonna just take it nice and easy. Now this does have independent front suspension and you can really feel it articulating pretty decently over some of the rocks. Let's see how it goes over these really big ones at the top. Absolutely no clearance issues. This Bronco just rocked that. Good work, Ford. Sweet, Tommy. That was pretty easy. Perfect, well, for you. I don't know about for a RAV4 or for a minivan. Blazy, what do you think of the Bronco? Pretty cool, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now this Bronco is rolling on a set of Goodyear Territory mud terrain tires. They are roughly 35 inches in diameter and that is mounted to a 17 inch rim with beadlock capability. Now this Bronco has what they call the Sasquatch package, which means you do get these big meaty tires straight from the factory. All right, Tommy, I, I finished the logs a couple days ago. It's a combination of telephone poles from my house and posts, fence posts from your house. And we did roll a few the other day, but I packed them down pretty good. So let's just hope for the best here. All right, sounds good. Now this Bronco is a wide beast, so I'm really gonna have to be careful with the line placement. And let's see if we have the clearance to make it over logs. All right, here we go. Tackling the logs in the Ford Bronco. Now I do have to say, this wild track has an absolutely beautiful ride quality it's so comfortable um, even when we're approaching these logs which in some cases are eight nine ten inches tall I mean it just walked right up and now the idea with Andre's pit is that this is going to be primarily a smaller SUV and crossover test course and then that side is going to be the uh, super extreme hardcore off-road course and we'll check that out in a second because that's looking pretty gnarly um, but so far Ford Bronco conquered the rocks, conquered the logs, no problem. So let's try the holes. This is gonna be interesting. All right, so I just dug these yesterday and the boss said, just dig some holes. So I just dug some holes. I don't know if it's gonna articulate right or not. So this is our first pass besides the backhoe. So I'm curious to see how it works. 
Well, the idea here is it's an articulation test and a traction aid test. So we're going to dive into the holes, pick up tires, and see if the, uh, the, uh, the, the vehicle can get unstuck or if we have to engage a locker. So let's see what happens. It is going to articulate because when I ran the backhoe over it after I dug the holes, when the back tire went down in the first hole, the bucket was like almost sticking straight up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see if we can get the nose of the Bronco sticking straight up too. So gonna approach it very carefully. Now this, um, on paper, is gonna be a big difference between the Ford and uh, the Jeep. So digging down into that hole, let's see if we have the articulation into the next hole. I'm gonna purposely take it really slow, but I think, I think we got plenty of articulation in this Ford, even with the independent front suspension, a little bit of throttle, look at that. David, your course is working beautifully. Oh man, made that look well, easy. Well, I, I built it for a 110 inch wheelbase, but you're a little shorter than that. You're only 96. I am shorter than that, but we still made it through with no difficulty. We did get some good flex there, uh, but even still the Bronco has plenty of articulation to make anything that we just did look easy. This is such a beast. Now, can my little Jeep conquer that? Let's find out. So Tommy, how much ground clearance do you have on the Jeep compared to the Bronco? You know, David, I'm down a couple of inches on this Wrangler uh, compared to that Sasquatch Bronco, and this is the point where everybody gets really upset that I'm comparing apples to oranges, and I know, I get it. But this is real world, right? Like, you're out on the trail, um, you need to keep up with your buddy and his foil loaded Bronco. Let's see if the Jeep can do it. David, I don't have power windows in my Wrangler, so I gotta go old school here for a sec. You're a man after my own heart. <laughs> so unlike that Ford, I don't have drive modes. I don't even have lockers, to be honest with you. I just have a limited slipper diff and four-wheel drive low and one panty dog. Oop, and a manual transmission. <laughs> Gotta remember how to drive a stick again. So let's see how the Jeep compares up rocks. So I'm gonna have to modulate the clutch. Hey, Tommy, I'm building two rock courses. <laughs> this one's gonna be there. I think for most SUVs, this Ooh. will be a challenge. Oh yes, that will be a major challenge, but rocks is really where the Wrangler shines, right? Solid for an axle. That didn't have any problem. No, short wheelbase, solid for an axle. Uh, that really is, is peak Jeep, right? It, that's what they were designed for since the early 1940s. Uh, but let's go ahead and check out logs and see how the ride compares to the Ford. Now this Jeep is rolling on a set of mud terrains as well, but quite a bit smaller, 32 point 32 and a bit inches in diameter, uh, BFG KM2s. Now, of course, you can buy a brand new Wrangler with something called the Extreme Recon Package, which gives you 35 inch tall tires like the Bronco, but this Jeep is just on its smaller, let's go with underdog tires. All right, David, let's see if we have the clearance for logs. Oh, I'm sure you do. It's just a matter of how fast you can take it. All right, so this is the same speed as the Ford, more or less. Okay, that is a, that's a lot more bumpy. That's for sure, but not bottoming out at all. All right, certainly the bigger tires on the Ford oh. made it a little bit smoother. I think I took out the Just camera. Just took out a camera. Um, the, the bigger tires on the Ford and then probably the independent suspension made that a little bit smoother up logs. Still made it up in the Jeep though. Luckily, we only broke the doohickey Milwaukee that attaches it. All right, David, what do you think on holes? Am I gonna start picking up tires? That Ford just walked up holes. Those big tires went right in. You think I'm gonna have a harder time? Yeah, I'm going to say that the Bronco probably has a little more articulation than you do. Oh, wow. Mr. Old School over here, like in the independent suspension. I see how it is. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. Try to take a similar line to dive right into the first hole. Also take it really slow. Ooh, picked up a tire a little bit there, though. Oh, not bad, David. Oh, that was nothing. Nothing. So I maybe picked up the right front just a little bit in that first hole, um, but we did I mean, walk through it. So, so far, the Jeep has kept up with everything that the Ford has done. But now David's gonna introduce us to our extreme off-road course. And that's actually gonna be a whole trail network when we're done with it, but uh, this is where you're gonna wanna, wanna really stay tuned. So David, down in Andre's Pit, smaller SUV crossover challenge. This whole area of our 22 acres is really hilly, really steep, and you've been hard at work creating an extreme course. So yesterday I was down here cutting and trimming branches so we wouldn't pinstripe all the vehicles. And then a few days ago we were cutting roads and creating obstacles. And I took my lunch break back here uh, yesterday and I was just thinking, 
man, I got a peaceful, easy feeling. You know, <laughs> I really think, I really think, you know, the good Lord blessed you when you found this property because you got you got the house and the garages and you've got lots of land, but you have lots of topography and trees and a lake and ruts and cliffs. I mean, you've got it all right here. And what a great opportunity to build a course. Well, we really appreciate it, David. We're very fortunate that you're helping us. I'm very fortunate that all of you have been watching to make this possible. Um, now, I'm not going to have a peaceful, easy feeling because I got to go through like three <laughs> feet of mud. I haven't actually been out here yet. David has just come on out. I've got a surprise for you. So I know we've got mud. I know we've got some really steep descents. Uh, uh, we'll see if the Ford can do it. So, Tommy, uh, this is going to be a challenge because we've never taken you know, a car through it or a 4x4. I did bring my truck with a winch on the front just in case. Yeah, probably good. Probably good idea, David. I was just looking at those ruts uh, through the, the the bog, and it's uh, it's it's pretty extreme. So we we may actually end up needing that. What better place to test four wheel drive vehicles than in a mud bog, right? Absolutely. So I'm in four low in the Ford Bronco. Now I am going to engage a different mode because why not? We've got sand, Baja, mud, and ruts. I mean that that's that's kind of the perfect mode, isn't it, David? That sounds as good as any. So this Bronco has the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6 and a 10 speed automatic. So absolutely no shortage of power in this thing. Uh, it's got the, the Sasquatch package. It's got the insanely low gearing. So if there was ever a vehicle to conquer the mud bog, it's going to be the squatched Bronco. Hey, you're in luck because I do have the power washer in the back of my truck. Yeah, you know, we're gonna need that. I don't want to make that phone call to Ford. Hey, your vehicle's stuck at the bottom of a ravine. All right, so here we go. Holy moly, is that deep. All right, now I'm gonna take it slow for the first time because I've never actually tried it down here. Let's see how the Ford ends up doing. Hey, the white track Bronco is the same width as a backhoe, believe it or not. <laughs> the wild track is, is backhoe width, David says. Ooh, got enough ground clearance. Cleared that tree. Oh, this stuff is gnarly. So swampy. Going up. Disable those. Oh, we made it out. I forget how freaking good these Broncos are on the road. We're going to have to go a little further into David's course to challenge it. Easy peasy. What the heck? The issue with these new Broncos is they're so capable. The audience is falling asleep. You know, if I had brought like any other vehicles right. there, be yeah, we brought the wrong vehicle for the first time. We needed to get stuck in here. Yeah, we something. should have brought like a like a Rav Four, just like <laughs> yeah, you know, or a, or a Subaru, and then, yeah, or a Subaru, <laughs> yeah, or a Subaru, and everybody be like, oh, that's really hard. But now people are gonna be like, that's nothing. I promise you, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get the Jeep and try the same thing. Okay. Okay, Tommy, the Bronco was the first vehicle to go through, and it kind of just made easy work of it. You think your Jeep's as capable? I mean, I love the size of this Jeep, David. It's dimensionally so so compact, but I'm not really sure I have the ground clearance compared to the Bronco. We'll see. Do you have lockers in your Jeep? Nope, no lockers. So this is a Pentastar V6 with a manual transmission and a limited slip rear diff. This is the Willys package. Actually, Willys Sport. I had to pay extra for air conditioning. <laughs> All right, through the bog and the Wrangler, take a similar line. Oh, I think it's gonna do it. Finally finding a use for those mud terrains. Oh, 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 that's on the underside. Oh, that's definitely scraping. All right, so. I can tell you're dragging. Yeah, so the clearance on the Bronco is definitely better. Yeah. You know, we need to get Jeep to send us one of those extreme recons with the 35s. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll do a... It would have been a good comparison. Well, you know, I just chopped all this out, all the trees and everything. I chopped them with the chainsaw. Uh-huh. So what you were hitting, you were dragging and hitting all those little bushes that I cut out. Oh, uh, interesting. So, you know, somebody any, has to plow through it. Any less ground clearance, though? And you'd start to get in trouble. Yeah, your diffs would have hung up on the For center. sure. Yeah. For sure. All right, well, should we keep going? Let's keep going. So this is pretty cool. So David has actually built out a little set of switchbacks 
We're calling it David's Folly because it was a ton of work. It was literally, literally a cliff over here. All right, so we'll see how it does. Now it is quite, quite steep and quite tight. So it's a good thing we're dealing with two doors today. Um, and yeah, it'll be a good comparison. Hey David, when you get down here, you should try your trail turn assist. Yeah, we'll take it super, super slow. Uh, but yeah, there's a little button on the dash. I'll show where it's at. And we'll click it and see if it'll help you make this turn tighter. Do you see that little button that looks like a macaroni noodle coming out of the, the, the uh, axle? This one right here? No, one more. Right here? Yep. Yeah, that Give one? Give that one a push. Okay. All right. That's going to break the inside wheel and help drag you around the corner. Sweet. So push that when I get down here? No, you can push it now, and oh, then when you go hard left, it's going to break the inside wheel. Oh, it, it knows when you turn uh -huh. to, to do the trick. Yeah. Okay. We'll give it a try. Wait. All right, crank it all the way over. That's that wheel. It's just dragging the wheel now. I can feel it putting the brake on. Kind of a funny feeling. Oh, wow. Check that out. Oh, wow. I thought I was going to have to back up, Tommy. Oh. So now it's breaking you a little too much. Give it a little okay. bit more. Give you it a little. Release it now. Yeah, try releasing it. I mean, I've really, I've really made the turn enough. I think I can come down it. Huh? huh. Try clicking on your rear locker. Make sure I don't take out a rocker panel. You're good. All right. Crank her all the way. Crank. Looking good. Ooh, that's a wide vehicle, David. I know it is. Well, the backhoe went down this, so... David has an idea that somehow backhoes are hugely capable machines, which is probably true, actually. A little little passenger. All right, stop there. Okay. David's doing great. Now, the reason I'm letting him drive is I just want to spot it and see how the vehicle performs on this kind of thing. All right, David, so uh, just go straight on. And now cut it a little bit, uh, driver. Perfect. Yep, and then a little bit more straight on. Beauty! What an awesome experience. Get to do the first tracks back here. Well, you built it. You with a very be... capable vehicle. Yeah, pretty cool, right? Yeah. It kind of just goes where you point it. I can't believe that turn. That turn is crazy. That was nice. So that turn assist really works well, although it got a little bit soft. And we did have to kind of back up and click on a locker to get it a little bit unstuck. I can't do that in the Jeep, so let's see if my brake lock differential system is good enough to just get me through what the Ford got through. All right, Blazy, that Bronco was an impressive machine. It really was. Now, I don't have that cool trail turn assist tech, but I do have a smaller vehicle dimensionally, which of course will help navigate this really, really tight turn, although no lockers. So, uh, I don't know. Let's just see what happens, Blazy. Try to take a similar line that David took. So the, the Bronco wheelbase is right at 100, right? Uh-huh. Yep. And the Jeep is 96. So, so, so you're, you're four inches shorter than the Bronco. Yeah, which should help me out here a little bit. Now, I am going to have to three-point turn this, although to be fair, you did as well. Oh, look at that, though. No locking diffs needed. That limited slip and the brake lock differential system really was fast to activate there and get me through this gnarly, gnarly little section. So let's go ahead and swing on down through this area. It's taking it nice and easy. All right, let's see if we can crawl up this little shaley section. All right. And just like that, like it's nothing. we're through. You're great. Thank you. Now, well, we did see a little bit of a difference, right? The Bronco, I think, was a little bit, a little bit more of a squeeze through that area. Well, you know, you did. Uh, this tire did come off the ground for a second. Yes, and yours did just ever so oh, it slightly. Did. Yeah, okay. just barely. Interesting. Um, but I think that without lockers, uh, the limited slip and the VLD perform better in this than in the Bronco. Yeah. Yeah, I see. The, the really the only difference there was the fact that I probably could have made that turn without backing up, if I'd have just kept after it. Right, but it was our first time. But, yeah. We don't want to destroy Ford's <laughs> brand <No>. new <laughs> All right, we got one more really tricky obstacle, then we got to head on out of here. Okay. 
All right, Dave, you know, this is interesting. So it's really, really steep coming down here, right? We got this big ledge. Yeah, a root. That's a root from the big tree. Okay, and then we got to climb up the other side. Right, we do. Plus, it's a little bit narrow. It is narrow between the trees, but uh, I'm curious as whether or not we're going to catch a hit on this log right here. All right, well, I'll go give it a go, and then you watch me. Let okay, me know. I'm gonna slam you got it. On. All right, down into Devil's Dip in the Ford Bronco. Now this front-facing camera, I'm usually not a huge fan of, but it is actually quite useful in these really narrow situations, especially in such a large vehicle. Nice and slow. Oh yeah, that tree root. That's kind of gnarly. All right, let me turn off these parking sensors. This is gonna drive me up the actual wall. Where are they? Here we go. Turn those off. Ooh, this is a great test of approach and departure angle. But this Bronco has so much of both. It's not really a problem. So getting out of here might be a little bit tricky. No. Why is nothing hard for a Bronco? Wow, that was ah! so capable. <laughs> what a machine! I thought for sure that he'd probably suspend a tire and then it might be a little difficult coming out of there, but nah. Now I am a little bit worried about ground clearance here. Um, not super worried about approach angle, but departure could be a little bit of a challenge. So we're just gonna take it super slow through here. And let's see if we end up hitting. Now when the grass gets kind of mushed back, you really see what a ledge this actually becomes. And we have to come through here, of course, with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, the vehicles on the way back too. A little curious to see how that'll be. Definitely fits through the trees a little easier. Ooh, fully articulated there. Of course the manual transmission is all about driver skill. There we go. All right. That's where that locker comes in handy. Well, that's where the automatic transmission and someone who knows what they're really doing. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it did it. It did it. it. Did it. You could just tell you spinning a little bit, whereas the Bronco really didn't spin at all. I think a lot of that stuff was... Huge it could be, it just, yeah. It just go deep into the holes where this kind of... Yeah, yeah, no doubt. But you did it, Tom. You did it? All right, Didn't let's... rub, didn't hit anything? No, let's close it up. Okay. David, I have to extend a huge thank you. This has been such a fun day. This course you have built out really is so cool. And it's gonna be hard with uh, vehicles that aren't as capable as these two, for certainly. And actually, I think uh, we've got so much topography back here. We're gonna build some especially really steep hills. We actually have one in the works that we're gonna test out, yep. which will really kind of push the limits of um, gearing and traction and all of it. I guess it's probably a good thing that we took one of the most capable vehicles first, just to see how it did. However, you know, it is going to be a challenge for a lot of trucks, longer wheelbase. I mean, a short wheelbase made the turn on the switchbacks look so easy. A longer wheelbase gonna vehicle struggle. is going to struggle. Um, the approach and departure angle right here was nothing for both these vehicles. Mm -hmm. But for longer ones, it's really going to be a struggle. It's going to be a challenge. But we have endless opportunities for making obstacles. It, in the back 40 over here. I mean, it's just a beautiful piece of land. It's pretty special, guys. Now let us know what you want to see done. I have to say, I think the Bronco probably outperformed the Wrangler a little bit today. But then, of course, is it worth the tens of thousands of dollars more? You can have fun with both of them. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, we'll see you on the next video.